ดีจ้านี่พี่ได้เองมาพบกันอีกแล้วใน Channel ไอดีวิดีโอของพี่ Today I got this book Ice is nice So I decided to dress up as this occasion. I really like the North Pole and South Pole, and it's super cool because you know not very much people get to go there. So when once I saw this book hanging on the shelf, I thought this would be the perfect book because uh, like it has new knowledge and it's super cool. So let's get started. I'm the cat in the hat, and we're off and away. To visit the poles, north and south, in one day, it will be a quick trip in the SS Ice Shopper, my super slip sliding, ice breaking pole hopper. The North Pole will be the pole hopper's first stop. It's the farthest point north on the Earth. It's the top. Some call this the land of the midnight sun. What's wrong with this statement? Show us thing one. To call this a land is an incorrect notion. The North Pole is located in the Arctic Ocean. Over most of this ocean, sea ice is floating, so only icebreakers are good here for boating. Snow on land near here can pile up quite thickly, forming ice caps and glaciers that do not move quickly. If you sit and watch and you wait patiently, icebergs will split off and spill into the sea. Icebergs are big. And a danger to ships, much thicker than sea ice or icebreaker flips. I have asked widely, and I've been told some very good reasons. The Arctic's so cold. Earth spins on an axis that goes through its middle, making one turn a day. That's one part of the riddle. On the side of the Earth that's facing away from the sun, it is night. On the other side, day. Earth spins on its axis while circling the sun. It takes a full year till this orbit is done. Six months, the North Pole tips away from sun's light, and makes Arctic winter one very long night. In the summer up north, when the light shines night and day, white snow everywhere reflects sunlight away. Without light, it's cold. Sometimes eighty below. That means eighty degrees less than good old zero. Native peoples live here. You ask, are they nuts? In the past, they keep snug in their sturdy skin huts. Today, people live here like you and me, with houses and cell phones and color TV. Some still fish and hunt, but not in dog sleds. Those marks in the snow are our snowmobiles' treads. And this group of people that you can see here are nomads who follow a herd of reindeer. Adaptation is the word I have been told for how Arctic animals weather the cold. Seals, whales, and walruses have blubber. You see, these layers of fat keep them warm as can be. The snowy owls warm in a feathered snowsuit. Then one's wearing one. Ah, now isn't he cute? The shaggy muskox has a coat of fine fur. That coat keeps him warm. I wish it had one. Brr. I will say this to you, and I think it's fair that the king of this pole is the great polar bear. He has layers of blubber and fur that is white, but his skin is as black as the dark of the night. The polar bear has an unusual hide. It is made up of hairs that are hollow inside. The skin and hair. Just cannot be beat for absorbing the sun's ray and holding the heat. As he walks on the snow on four snowshoe-like paws, no animal is safe from a polar bear claws. In the winter, the foxes blend into the snow. White fur camouflages them quite well, you know. They hide in the snow and hope that they may sneak around that cold bear and live one more day. Winter year round. Oh my, what a bummer! But for four months, you'll find there is actually summer. In summer, the North Pole tilts back towards sun's light. It is sunny all day, even when it's midnight. It gets a bit warmer. The snow melts in patches. A tiny insect called the midge fly now hatches. Berries and mosses and all kinds of flowers, when temperature rises, are sprouting in hours. 
Summers bring heat up to eighty degrees. Walk outside with no hat, and you won't even freeze. The owl and the fox turns brown like the hare, and blend into the land when it's warm there. This place can get lively, it's true. Mark my words, when the caribou comes by the thousand in herds, they've come many miles. It's called migration. They give birth on the way. It's no spring vacation. They've come north to graze as long as it's warm. They head south before the first autumn storm. Speaking of south, it's time that we hop. The South Pole will be the pole hoppers' next stop. While the North Pole is found in the water, you see the South Pole is on land, and take it from me. Antarctica's valley and its mountains steep are buried in ice that's at least two miles deep. One look at the chart in my hand will make clear: when it's summer up north, it is winter down here. If you thought that the North was a cold place to be, the South can get colder by far. Believe me. Minus one hundred thirty degrees, and this is no laugh. It's cold. I just snapped my ski pole in half. It's colder down south, and the main reason why is these mountains that rise up a mile or two high. Summer's cold too, but penguins come still to eat the fat shrimp and the plentiful krill. Emperor penguins stay near the coast. Small fish and shrimp are what they like most. And there's nothing here good for making a nest, so fathers' warm feet cradle their chicks' eggs best. They raise their chicks in a crèche all together. They huddle to stay warm in the freezing weather. But emperor penguins are only one kind. Other penguins come here, as you will soon find. Shinstrap penguins, most numerous of all, live in large groups and have a shrill call. A Delhi penguins also live in large flocks. Mates watch over eggs in nests lined with rocks. A hit stripe, the sign of a ginto breed, the penguin with the fastest underwater speed. Whatever great height the rock hopper may lack, they make up in pluck and are quick to attack. Penguins of all kind get here on ice floes because penguins can't fly, as everyone knows. They have stubby legs and waddle, you know. They bob back and forth, and the going is slow. But way down deep in these Antarctic seas, the penguins can swim with the greatest of ease. Have you heard of this thing that is called climate change? It means the Earth's temperature are shifting in range. The Earth's getting warmer, and the polar ice is melting quite quickly, which isn't so nice. Students and scientists from dozens of nations are studying the poles from ships, planes, and stations. Their satellites watch the weather and ice. They track climate change and check their facts twice. If we all work together, I hope in my heart, we can keep our poles icy or make a good start. The end. So, did you like the book? Because I absolutely love it. It is so awesome. It's so cool to be learning about the North Pole and the South Pole. It's so awesome. And these are two of my favorite pages. Page. Reindeer, like it's so cute. I love it, and like it's just I don't know. I just have a liking for it. I love it. And my absolute favorite animal, the penguins. Like these are so cute, and like I see them in almost every aquarium around the world. Like I, can, you cannot believe how happy I am. I saw this in the book. I was so happy. So like. Don't forget to tell me which character or animal do you like in this book in the comments down below. Please like and subscribe to my channel so you won't miss any fantastic videos like this anymore. But now, goodbye.